Hello and welcome to Mediumship Matters with me, Hannah McIntyre. Season 2, episode 21, and it's exciting for me today because I've had my first question submitted as an audio message. So let's see if the tech works and hopefully you will all be able to hear from lovely Belle who has submitted a listener question. Hi Hannah, it's Belle here. I'm sending you a message all the way from Sydney, Australia. I love your podcast. I've listened to all of your episodes, some of them twice, if not more, because I love them so much. But I have a question for you. I was wondering if you could just give me some insight on what your thoughts are on this issue. So my dad has recently passed away this year, quite suddenly in January. And since he's passed, we've had him come through to a few different people and he's had certain messages or things that they've passed on to us that he's said to them or he's communicated to them. Um, One of them is that he um, feels like he's stuck here or he's not moving on to the next stage, that he feels that he wants to be here and not move on because there's nothing for him to do there. Um, Another piece of information that we got was that he's still connected and that um, he actually said, like, let me go, that, like, we might be holding him here. And I was just really worried because, like, I don't want to think that he's stuck in some sort of limbo or that us being upset and grieving for him and thinking about him so much would be holding him back from somewhere else that he needs to go. Um, I do know that from listening to your podcast, I'm pretty sure that um, I've heard you talk about this before. Um, But yeah, I was just wondering if you'd be able to give me some insight on your thoughts about this, because it is quite a disturbing thing to think that through our actions, we might be holding him back from somewhere he needs to be or to move on um, and not be with like other loved ones that have passed away and to fulfill the rest of like his existence or journey wherever he needs to go so yeah I would love for you to give me some information if you can or your thoughts that would be amazing and thank you so much um we love listening to you here I've sent your podcast through Spotify to quite a few different people and they've all started listening so you're all the way over here in Australia now thanks Hannah bye okay wasn't that fun? Uh, so let's talk about this. There's so much in there. I should have written notes, but I was too busy holding my phone up to the uh, camera trying to uh, get all the information in. So let's let's talk about all of this. Now, first of all, let's talk about the concept of them uh, staying here because it's boring in the spirit world or there isn't anything for them to do uh that one made me chuckle a little bit if I'm absolutely honest now the thing about mediumship always is that everybody has their own ideas and opinions and I can only give you my ideas um my opinions but here are my thoughts as I know it and I want to be really clear about this this will be different to my thoughts from spirit five years ago because we're always evolving and we're always trying to change our understanding. And this takes me back straight away to valves, the episode on valves. Again, that reminder that we can only receive what we allow ourselves to receive. And sometimes that can be our ideas of how the spirit world works and our teachings that we've had from other teachers here on earth. And sometimes we get such set ideas, and I know I have, about how things are, that it can take some time for the spirit world to undo them. And I am not coming at this saying that I feel that all of my valves are open, because I know that I limit, I limit all the time. And they come in with some very interesting concepts that blow my mind. And then I still can't surrender to it or quite comprehend it and it you know I often think it's a bit like trying to build a statue or something they have to chip away at all my beliefs slowly 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 uh, in in order for me to be able to receive what they want me to receive so 
oh, okay, they still want to talk about that. As well, we have to understand the limits of human consciousness. So at this time on this planet, there is a limit to what we can understand due to the level of consciousness, the vibration that a physical being can be at. And even people who are really, really spiritual, I don't know, people who live in Zen monasteries who do nothing but work with spirit all day, every day, they will have a different understanding, yes, but they are still limited by the fact that they are a human being. And you hear this with uh, spiritual teachers all the time, the messages should be evolving, should be growing, should be changing. So I will answer this to the best of my abilities as I can right now in April 2022. If you were to submit the same question to me in two years time, my answer might be slightly different. And that is the same for the mediums that have been helping you, Belle. They are limited by their belief systems and by their understanding, you simply cannot receive something from the spirit world that you are not able to receive because of your thoughts and your beliefs. And my best example of this is I used to not only believe in but run rescue circles. So I used to believe that spirit could get stuck here um, and that trauma and upset would hold people in some kind of limbo. And we used to hold groups and my God, the energy you could feel, the energy you could feel as you sent that healing. And when spirit first tried to get me to open up to the idea that no one gets stuck here, it was very, very difficult for me because I had felt it. I had seen hundreds of spirits moving into the light and that was my ego. Eek. It was. It was me feeling like... I needed to take action, like I needed to do something. It's also a little bit of a judgment that somebody's life experience here could disconnect them from the spirit world. And I think that all people, I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again, leave an echo behind. And especially if it's a traumatic passing or a traumatic death, or they've had some sort of upset, I think that trauma you feel more naturally. I think people leave good imprints behind too. We all leave an echo. You know how if you make a sound, it carries on going forever, just ricochets through the universe. So it's only your ability to hear it. It's not that the sound has ever finished. And I think it's the same with us. We leave these elements, this energy behind. And of course, with our human judgment, we judge the good vibes we don't even look for. We don't look for the good vibes, do we? When was the last time in a rescue circle anybody looked for the good vibes left behind, behind from somebody who lived a good and happy life? We don't do it, but we do seek out the negative. And of course, if your valves are turned to negative, what are you going to feel? You're going to feel pain. You're going to feel fear. You're going to feel anxiety. You're going to feel unhappiness. And so I think when we do a rescue circle, what we're doing is healing. We're just taking that beautiful energy of the spirit world and transforming the energy that's been left behind by people in pain. But like I said, if you had said this to me five years ago, I'd have told you you were talking out of your bottom. Very politely, probably more politely than that, but I would have said it. And this is the problem. This is the problem for all of us. And this is why it's really important as a developing medium or I don't know if you, I mean, for me, I will be a developing medium until the day I die. I'm going to be developing forever. And that's important to understand. It's important to understand that the only thing we know is that we don't know anything <laughs> and that it's going to evolve and change. And as the understanding of mankind starts to open up, that creates a new playground for us all to play in with new ideas and new concepts. And some of them will override the old concepts and some of them will add on to the old concepts. So I don't believe that rescue circles are rescuing trapped spirits, but I still believe they have a valuable purpose. They're still healing, they're still helping. There you go. Anyway, so first things first. My understanding from the spirit world is that there is no time on the other side. Time is a human construct. And so therefore, if there's no time, there's no need to worry about anything to do 
over the other side because you'll never get bored because there is no time. Equally, from all accounts that I've heard so far, it's a pretty blissed out, rad, amazing place to be in the spirit world, just floating in a cacophony of colour and love. Uh, So I don't believe that your dad would not be going because there isn't anything for him to do because he can just be a part of God. So that's pretty cool. But your dad being here with you doesn't mean that he isn't having that experience because it's everything. It's We are everything, spirit is everything. The universe is experiencing itself. So there is nothing more than what there is, which is love, which is great. And that's the best I can explain it in my layman's terms with my little pea brain. So first of all, I don't believe in that. But second of all, I don't believe that your dad could be trapped here by your love for him because that really, I find that a bit of a difficult concept, um, generally speaking, because it's a bit like shaming you for missing and loving your dad. And I'm so sorry for your loss, Belle. It's only been a few months. Of course you're missing your dad. Of course you are. I still miss my grandfather, who's been gone for 20 years. And I would never want somebody to try and make me feel like I'm responsible in some way for him not being able to be on the party, party bus of heaven, because I'm here and I still cry for him. That's just craziness. In which case, nobody would ever leave. Um, But here's the thing, I don't really think they do. (laughs) So to complicate this further, let's change our concept of the spirit world slightly because this is how spirit have been showing it to me recently so rather than feeling like the spirit world is somewhere separate that we travel to start trying to think of the spirit world as being everywhere and this physical incarnation of earth being in the spirit world submerged within contained within And just like if you could understand your aura, for example, surrounds you, but also permeates through your physical body. So it's not just a coating, it goes through you. The spirit world goes through earth. It goes through all physical existence. This physical existence is a construct. So when we die, we move back into our spirit selves, our energetic forms, and then there is no separation. It's, oh, I'm trying to think of ways to explain it, like taking off a virtual reality headset and seeing a different way of seeing things. It doesn't mean that your experience in the virtual reality headset wasn't real, let's use the word real, but also your experience with the headset off is still real. I know. Oh. But that's how I understand it. So this idea of spirits being separated from spirits is actually an impossibility because we are in the spirit world. So when, and that's the true world, that's the real world. The real, the real world is not the physical world. The real world is the spirit world. So they, we return to our real state rather than the fake state of physicality. Oh, I hope I'm explaining this well enough. So therefore you can't trap anybody here and no spirits do get trapped here because there is only the physical and the non-physical. You move from the physical to the non-physical, it's done. And I know that I've said this before, but I'm gonna say it again. One of the reasons that I can talk to you about this is because I, when I started asking the questions about this, the questions were, If I believe in God, I do. I believe in angels, I do. I believe in the ascended masters, Jesus, uh, Buddha, Krishna, Vishnu. If I believe in all of them, I do. Um, And I believe that they are all manifestations 
of God, the creator, the one, I do. And I believe that spirit in the spirit world and spirit guides and our loved ones being around us still, I do. Then what makes me think that that infinite power with that infinite knowing that can create worlds and uh, just what makes me think with all of that that they would possibly need my help to help spirits move over to the other side. What part of me thinks that I am needed or necessary in any way, shape or form? And that is what started the questions. You know, if I'm doing a healing, uh, if I'm clearing a space, if I'm clearing a house from an energy, um, an attachment out of somebody's energy, all I'm really doing is calling in the angels and asking them to do it. Why do the angels need me to do, ask them to do it? Are they all up there in heaven going, oh God, I'm so bored, what shall I do now? Oh, look at that person down there, he's got an attachment, but never mind, because we need another human to tell us it's an attachment so that we can take the attachment off. What a shame, we'll just have to wait for someone to come along who's done that course. Do we believe in a spirit world like that? Does that make sense? And it's true of all of mediumship. You don't need to come and see a medium. I mean, it's quicker than practicing for 10 years and learning to feel the spirit world with you. Um, But I don't believe that any of us are more gifted than others. I don't believe that any of us have a greater connection to spirit. Spirit is the natural state. Communicating with spirit is the natural state. And we have to understand that they understand concepts and information that is way beyond our reach. And so what do we think that we bring to the table? And are we actually just trying to validate our own existence and our own gifts by putting a life of service in there? And I do think service is important. I do think it's important to be of service to the spirit world and other people. But for some of us, that becomes more. It becomes ego. It becomes, I'm validating myself because I did this, this and this. And there has to be that balance. So, Belle, no, I don't think that your dad is trapped here because you love him. I believe your dad is stood really, really closely beside you because he loves you too. And I know that, God forbid, if I got run over tomorrow and I died, I would stand really close to everybody who I love too. And I know that there is no choice for the spirit world because time and space don't exist. So they get to stand beside all of us. They don't have to choose. I used to imagine it a bit like bewitched and they'd be pinging in out here, there and everywhere, checking in on everyone. But now I understand that there is no choice. They are with everybody all the time. There is no differentiation. And so I will stand next to my daughter and my son and my husband and my mum and my dad and my sister and my brother and my friends. I will haunt my friends because that will be funny. Um, Just giving you all a heads up if you're listening. But I won't go anywhere because why would you, if you have infinite energy, infinite power, infinite knowing, why would you not want to see everything? And when my children if i was to pass and my children grew up and met somebody else and they had children while i was in spirit i'd be watching those children too and i'd be stood close beside them and maybe even those children's children because i can do all of that and still be part of the oneness and still be in the bliss and still be in the amazing wonderfulness of the spirit world it's not either or i don't need to choose And that is my understanding at this moment of how it works. And it's okay that they said those things to you because it just meant that their valves are turned to particular dials and those particular dials can only receive what they can receive. And it's unfolding always. And they might listen to this and think I'm... I am talking out of my butt and that's okay. Um, I have no problem with that. 
I get people messaging me all the time. Normally, normally it's the rescue circle thing. So I look forward to hearing from you if you're so inflamed that I dared to say that you're not doing God's work for God because God isn't capable of it. <gasps> oh, that was shady. But we have to kind of work through that kind of thing and we have to be willing to look at it. And there is a real... Mm, what's the word that I want to use? We have to be careful as spiritual people that we don't start patronising the spirit world and we don't start patronising other people's experiences here. And I just really can't believe in a spirit world that needs direction from me, ever. I know that the spirit world if they they know what we need better than we know so why would they need me to tell them what to do anyway bell i've gone off on one so uh, yeah your dad is with you yes but out of choice and because he loves you and in a long long time when it is your time to move back into the non-physical you will take that step, that one breath, it's all it is, and you will see your dad there and you will be reunited and you will realise in that moment that you were never separated. But not because you're forcing that, but because that's the way it is for all of us. So I hope that makes sense. I know I'm always saying that, but I've said it again. What are you going to do about it? And if not, drop me another voice text. And if you've got a question, guys, um, please do drop me a voice text or send me an email. Uh, you can look for Mediumship Matters on Facebook and just send one into my inbox there and I can use it on the show. Or you can send me an email that I will read out loud. And ask your questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Um, yeah, let's, let's collaborate. Let's see where this can go. And, uh, sending you so much love, Belle. I am looking forward to reading, uh, for you tomorrow. Uh, although this will be released after I've read for you because I'm pre-recording because I'm going on holiday. So, uh, yeah, have a lovely time guys. And I will catch up with you soon.